Well, um, yeah, okay, let's talk about P Persinger's work first to the extent that I, that I understand it. Uh, Persinger, P Persinger is, um, seems to me not to be a man who is open to the idea that there may be other realms beyond this one. Um, but he has used electromagnetic fields to induce altered states of consciousness where the individuals in those altered states report contact with beings or the sense of a, a little being just near them, just, just behind them. And Persinger, I think, interprets that as a pure artifact of the brain, something that's just generated by the brain. But of course, it's equally possible that that little being is actually there uh, and that the altered state of consciousness is, is uh, allowing them to see it. At any rate, what his work tells us is that electromagnetic fields do have a profound effect on, on human consciousness. Now, this um, is where my work on consciousness does intersect with the work that I have done in the past on, on the idea of a lost civilization. One of the, the most uh, striking aspects of ancient mythology uh, all around the world is first of all, and this is truly universal, uh, the notion of a great flood, of a, of a cataclysm which destroyed a higher civilization. The Atlantis story, which was passed down to us by Plato, is just one, one example amongst thousands uh, in mythology all around the world that says there was a time, a golden age in the distant past when a great civilization was destroyed and we fell. There was a fall and we came, came back up uh, since then. The very same myths that talk about this contain a series of numbers. Almost always these, these numbers are there. And the numbers turn out uh, to relate to an astronomical phenomenon called the precession of the equinoxes. Um, the fundamental work on this was done by Giorgio de Santillana at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology in his book Hamlet's Mill, published in the 60s, uh, where he shows that um, observations of the precession of the equinoxes are recorded in two ancient myths. Now let me just explain this a, a little bit. <clears throat> if um, you were to stand anywhere on the planet 12 and a half thousand years ago, an hour before dawn on the spring equinox uh, and look due east, you would see the constellation of Leo sitting on the horizon in the place where the sun is going to rise. And in astrological terms, that's called the age of Leo. For the last two and a half thousand years, it's been Pisces that's been sitting on the horizon at the place where the sun rises. And as the song goes, we are moving into the dawning of the age of Aquarius because that means that the constellation of Aquarius will be sitting there. Now, why do the background constellations against which the sun rises change? It's as though there's a great circle going on. Uh, you can imagine a belt around the <coughs> equator of the Earth and it's circling uh, with, these, with these background constellations. The orthodox view is that there is a wobble on the axis of the Earth, rather like that. Uh, and this wobble completes a full cycle so that the extended north pole of the Earth makes a complete circle in the heavens um, once every 25,920 years. There are 12 constellations in the zodiac, and that means that each zodiacal constellation has roughly 2,160 years housing the sun on the spring, on the spring equinox. If you bring it down to a single degree, there are 30 degrees to each zodiacal constellation. If you bring it down to a single degree, you'll find that it's 72 years, that uh, the, the background constellation will move one degree in relation to the sun in 72 years. This number 72, the number 2,160, and multiples and dividers of that, 4,320, uh, half of uh, 72 is uh, 36, half of 36 is 18, add 36 to 18, you get 54. These, this sequence of numbers that seem to be derived from the observation of the precession of the equinoxes is, is found in cultures all around the world. A new theory has been put forward uh, quite uh, recently. There's a, an, an organization on the West Coast called the Binary Research Institute, which is suggesting that the observable effects of precession of the equinoxes could be produced by another motion altogether, that our reference frame is wrong, that it isn't at all caused by a wobble on the axis of the Earth. The idea of the wobble is that the Earth is our viewing platform, and if the viewing platform very gradually shifts position, then the 
patterns of the stars in the sky, their, their positions in the sky will also change. But exactly the same observable effects could be produced by another motion altogether. Uh, is it possible that the Earth is in orbit around another star? And this is what uh, a great deal of very good scientific work is beginning to support, uh, that, that our solar system, that the Sun, is on a great circle journey in space around another star, and that star may be Sirius. And the suggestion is that the rise and fall of world ages, if you go to Indian tradition, the notion of the yugas, uh, that, that there's a golden age and <coughs> gradually the ages decline until we have a complete collapse and then it builds up again, that maybe this is actually, ha actually has to do with effects on human consciousness of electromagnetic fields that are encountered during this huge circular journey uh, through, through space. And it, it seems to me an attractive and interesting idea.